Studio Lenox Film presents The main feature of an extraordinary personality is the ability to see deeper and further than others. The most important is to select from a vast number of facts and events. Of particular interest is when such people live among us. He is not often written about, nor is he often invited to TV but he is received by presidents and kings. Americans feel proud to hand him the keys of their city. His name is Victor Petrik. The Universe of Victor Petrik. The marvelous sound of Stradivarius violins struck him, but how to recreate the lost secret of their manufacturing? Victor Ivanovich has unraveled this age-old mystery. He himself has become a violin expert. One day in the 16th century, a carpenter, an ordinary carpenter in Breschen, Gospar Gonzolo, made a violin. Just like that, without rhyme or reason, he made a violin. It wasn't really a violin, it was half a violin, or a quarter of a violin. And finally, after a long-term process of hard work, the expert created the final instrument. The violin had no predecessors. The violin emerged immediately, in one day, in solid hands. A great person at that time knew the secret of harmony, of geometrical harmony, of geometric construction. And this is the greatest mystery of all. The secret of constructing violins was lost in the late 18th century. Since the late 18th century, who has not tried to build a violin? It does not have the Italian sound, and no one could repeat it. And what is the Italian sound? This is not because they want to see what was the Italian sound, but because it is the closest sound to the human voice. Victor Petrik made a violin worthy of a Stradivarius, having proved that the artist accurately followed the divine proportion. The drawings resemble the paintings of Leonardo, None of us thought to make a parallel to the genius of the Renaissance. Violin, it's a certain harmony. We are compelled to further associate with that what we know about the harmony of the world and how it is expressed. It is expressed by the notorious concept of the golden section, which Leonardo da Vinci called the divine proportion. It was everywhere in the works of Leonardo da Vinci. How our heart beats is the same as how our brain works. Alpha, gamma rhythm of human brain invariants are equal to 0.618, as is the ovary in an apple, 0.618, as is in the egg yolk, 0.618, as in the movement of planets. We cannot explain it. That's why it is not the research category golden section. The number pi is scientific, and 0.618 is not scientific. We have no idea what it is. And that's when I thought that we should search here. But it took a few years. The first movement, when I got the width of the upper oval, take the length, multiply 11 times 0.618. You get the lower half of the length. They set a point. The bottom half of this is multiplied by 0.618 and by 2. And you always get the width of the upper oval. Take any violin. It is a finished drawing of a perfect violin. It is for this drawing that it was built. And then it was certainly not just a flash of inspiration. It was then the same glow of happiness which is gotten. That gratitude that we receive. Seekers, 
the moment of contact with the truth. It gives the feeling of the highest happiness. I know each of its sounds. I know each of the states of this violin, and I love them. The whole world, all that exists, is the universe. This concept refers primarily to the universal laws that govern the world. From the sounds of violins to chemical reactions. The clean sound of violin and pure water. Water, the basis of life on earth. A person can live without food for more than a month. Without water, he won't survive more than a week. But to drink it today, you must first purify it. Have any of us here heard about this matter? Trade butylavy methyl ether. But the second issue, one of the major environmental challenges of our time. This is Bush Sr. It was with him that they began adding MTBE in gasoline sold in America. It allows gasoline to burn better. But the ether itself passed through the soil and dissolved in the water. The toxicity was great. The Americans hadn't taken that into account. The ether passed from the soil water into the rivers and lakes. And that is close to the faucets in residential apartments. They thought they were doing well. Unfortunately, this ether was a strong poison and is not susceptible to treatment in conventional wastewater treatment plants. America sounded the alarm. The ether inexorably spread quickly. The people were evacuated from cities, fleeing from the contagion of poisoned water. A dose of MTBE that is more than 20 milligrams per liter is considered lethal. Experiments in rats showed that it could cause cancer of the kidneys. Entire institutions struggled with this problem. The U.S. Congress has allocated for the study several billion dollars, while the ether has continued to infect America. And only recently, the Americans learned that in Russia there is a scientist who can help them. In November 2003, American scientists with samples of contaminated water came to consult with Victor Petrick. The Americans asked to at least reduce the ether content in the water, but Victor always strives for the maximum. How do I solve this problem? How do you even begin to take up this struggle for a solution? What if, what if we apply the principle of inversion? It is popularly expressed in the saying, if the mountain does not come to Muhammad, then Muhammad goes to the mountain. If you cannot clear the water from the ether, you can try and clean the ether from the water. In exactly four months, Viktor Petrik reported that the problem was solved. In Russia, Tom Leahy, director of the analytical center of the government of the United States, came immediately. In Russia, an experimental installation was waiting for now, the MTBE contaminated water will pass through the system, which will be processed by the technology of Professor Viktor Petrik. This water is purified. The result of careful analysis, the conclusion of the American National Laboratory, Sierra, was that traces of MTBE in the water were not found. We hope that the collaboration with Professor Victor Petrick will bring enormous benefits to our country, to both the economy and the environment. What is particularly valuable is that Mr. Victor Petrick doesn't process and transform the already known principles, but invents entirely new ones. The innovation and invention of Professor Victor Petrick it is indeed an achievement of the 21st century. As a token of sincere gratitude, the Bush family has invited Victor Petrick and his family to the celebration of the birthday of George Bush Sr. None of us can really imagine the extent of the tragedy with contaminated water.
In the USSR, when our country made great efforts to catch up and overtake America with the huge scale of construction, such trifles as the environment were not even thought about. At that time, the foundation was laid for the current tragedy. That water is the reason why the life expectancy of our citizens in Russia is ranked at 130th in the world. Our rivers, lakes and groundwater sources are polluted by oil, phenoleum, benzene and other hydrocarbons. They decontaminate water, alas, to this day by antediluvian methods. Water, that which gives life, also takes it. These issues were discussed at the World Economic Forum in Zurich. Russia is a huge country with good prospects for the development of clean quality water. If we talk about numbers in the world, just think, 400 million people have no access to water. Therefore, Russia may become a breakthrough here in these matters. We have presented the latest models of water treatment through our scientist Viktor Petrik in St. Petersburg. This is an excellent Excellent development. This development is now in demand around the world and has great potential. For the first time in the world, Viktor Petrik has developed an industrial method of carbon nanomaterials. This material, USVR, carbon mixture of high reactivity, completely purifies water from oil and other hydrocarbon compounds. It looks like the focus of an experienced illusionist. Natural layered hydrocarbon materials are taken and mixed together. And what are they mixed with? It is the secret of Viktor Petrik and protected by patent. This is the phenomenon of the formation of nanocarbon structures by the means of cold decomposition of carbon compounds. We can pour carbon compounds in the small plates. The process is activated by chemical means, and you will see that these carbon compounds will increase in volume a thousand times. These nanocarbon structures possess fantastic absorbent capabilities previously unattainable for any material that existed prior to science. Smokers who let out smoke with pleasure from their mouths cannot even guess what a surprise has been prepared for them by Viktor Petrik. The most dangerous thing about smoking is not nicotine. The most dangerous thing is carbon, which sits in our lungs, carbon resin. Here is a specially modified USVR. That is, in percentage terms, have many more nanocarbon structures. And we have a cigarette. What do we see? We see that the cigarette lights up brightly when I inhale. But no smoke. Where is the smoke? The smoke is here. Remarkable. Not curious, but remarkable all of this. So I feel that the entire amount of nicotine has entered the body. Here the cheeks sag, like the ears seem to be trying to droop. Here is our nanocarbon sorbent, USVR. It takes away from the fumes all nanocarbon particles. That is a visible part of which we have seen, which represents the greatest danger. Laboratory experiments have shown that it takes the most dangerous carcinogen, 3,4 benzperin. So we have reduced the risk of cancer by thousands of times. To collect from the ocean surface tons of oil, just 20 kilograms of carbon mixture is needed. During training exercises for oil spills, municipal emergency services treated the coastal strip by traditional means. USVR was 10 times more efficient than previous sorbents. After the passing of the USVR loading separators, the purification step exists up to 0.03, 
which means that it is reduced by a few thousand times. In a certified laboratory of water analysis, we were simply not believed. They said this could not be done. They were only convinced after the results showed up. Well, it's natural, because no one ever in the world has done it. St. Petersburg officials have only recently been interested in the new method, although the problem of water pollution in the city is very serious. First, the question is resolved in that way that today our filters will be installed along with the separator into ships that can clean all by themselves, everything, and throw back into the sea drinkable water. This is demonstrated here. Big tests were made and the manager of the boats has invited an important delegation to demonstrate its effectiveness. The most important thing is that there is a limit to its absorption. It's called saturated forest. You can't take an absorbent that weighs 10 tons on a ship. You will use all the available space and this problem is solved by getting a concentrate without any other equipment. I would just like to acknowledge, here is deep science. Here we see how it looks like dough is rising. The secret of all this, the rupture of between Tamarni ties, without the application of any energy. We saw a bucket of graphite. We have seen an ongoing process. Depending on the modifications which I run, if this is changed in the sorbent, this is 400, 500 times. If this is changed in the operating time of nanotubes, carbon nanostructures are at 600, 700 times. Each illusionist relies on assistance. This role has been taken by the NTV correspondent. Not resisting, decided to take part in the experiment. Now we pour this horrible mix into the container. We see a huge ecological catastrophe. And then the unique Russian technology begins to work. The nanocarbon filter turns this liquid into drinking water. There is the water, which I can drink and enjoy life. Cheers! Try the water first and then thank me. No, smell. Tasty? It's really tasty water. The water isn't only good, but amazingly clean. We are the first here today to witness the real industrial application of nanotechnology. How often do we say nanotechnology will change the future? Where is it? Did we see it before? Now we see the technology. It is demanded by every living person in the world. From Kuwait, they brought this horrible sand with oil. We mixed this sand with our USVR and we got clean water. I took it and drank it, and everyone took two steps back in horror. I handed the glass to the sheikh. The sheikh smelled the water and handed it to his minister of water and said, try it. The minister smelled it and handed it back to the sheikh. The sheikh looked at it and then drank it. In two days, he fired him. At this time, a very important person is tasting the water, Dr. Helmut Krunas, former minister of the armed forces of Austria. He now heads the National Research Center. Clean water. The name of a new national project which is spoken about at the Congress Party United Russia, Boris Grislov. The first participant in the project was the governor of Novgorod, Mikhail Prusik. He installed water purification systems at schools and hospitals. Another 500 sites are waiting for their turn. Some of our scientists have invented new technologies and protect them with patents. These are real discoveries which make the way for new elements, such as nanocarbons. This is a sorbent of the highest quality, to filter water in both industrial and household quantities. 
And here in Severlovsk area will be a pilot project. I hope that in the spring of next year we will be able to invite specialists here from all over the country to show how to clean water and what water our citizens can drink. Nanocarbon materials have other amazing properties and applications. Viktor Petrik established technology that has already been introduced in several American universities. The technology of running industrial nanocarbon pipes, a feat which the world has yet to see. It is exactly these nanotubes which are the object that holds the very future that will change the face of civilization. Its strength characteristics are such that if we make a nanotube rope, it will be able to lift a passenger from the Earth to the Moon. This is where the idea of space elevators come from. This phenomenon in America called this tube top model. The world saw it for the first time with open ends. These materials are obtained from the sorbent. For the first time in the world were obtained branching nanotubes. These are ready transistors for radio electronics. For the first time in the world, nanocarbon rings were obtained. These are nanofractals. For some reason you see it in the shape of crosses. This is how the nano world looks. The small town of Sevalosk, where Viktor Petrik lives and works, has become a kind of mecca for all those who need to solve a scientific or technical problem. They are waiting for a miracle, but Viktor Petrik is no wizard, just a man with extraordinary intuition. In the universe in which Viktor Petrik creates all that exists is subject to harmony, harmony of thoughts, feelings, sounds and colors. The combination of a psychologist and artist creates amazing results. In this picture, each face of each person shows each specific form of the disease. The professional will always see Napoleon, the maker of destinies. Please note beside him is Aristotle, manic depressive, Psychosis, a deep depression. But these are moments of leisure. Industrial tasks don't allow you to be distracted. Silicon, the main element in solar energy and computer technology. But how to get silicon in large quantities? Viktor Petrik knows the answer to this question. There are two issues, energy and chlorine pollution, necessary for obtaining pure silicon. Victor agreed to both. Silicon is needed in many different fields of engineering, electronics and solar space. I first created the technology of growing single crystal silicon directly from the gas phase. This is my first, which will be stored forever. This is my first monocrystal, which is obtained from the force of piles of raw material production of fertilizer. I saw the future in the following way. Now we know. Modern glass coated with nickel and cobalt that enable us to reduce the amount of heat coming into our buildings. Exactly in this way will glass be used. They will be covered with a layer of superfine silicon and we will get electricity directly from this drain. Today's modern buildings are 80% glass. So here, from single crystals of silicon, which were at the lab setup and which passed the test today in the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna. For the first time, detectors were received. They are absolutely unique. This monocrystal is very unique. At first, it caused extreme surprise. One layer is ideal. The second is absolutely not working. Here the installation. This is the first industrial plant. There will be crystals with a diameter up to 200 millimeters. And now I'm already creating an industrial machine for the first time in the world that gets silicone by means of the gas method. 
кремния газофазным методом. А главное, в этой технологии... Все связано со всем. Everything is connected with everything. Everything affects everything. That is the law of the universe, allowing Viktor Ivanovich to move from problem to problem as far as they are together. Not many people know that a significant amount of rare metals, the platinum group metals, in which the industry needs, is not extracted from the fields but from the waste of metallurgical production. To date, the selection and separation of rare metals such as rhodium, osmium, gold, platinum, palladium is extremely labor-intensive. Consider, to single out, separate and purify these metals, the original raw materials must pass 96 stages of labor-expensive and environmentally harmful processes. Victor Petrik received extra metals in one step. This ore contains nearly the entire system of Mendeleev. It is produced in the world-renowned mill Norris Nickel. Victor Petrik can extract from this ore platinum, osmium, and palladium. A few years ago, at the lab set up in the presence of the commission, which was the general director Norix Nikol Hagaziev, director of the Institute of Forensic Sciences of Russia's FSB, Fizienka, head of the analytical center of the FSB, Kharkov. Here, the concentrates from Norix Nikol within a few minutes received 32 grams platinum and 18 grams of palladium. Iridium was obtained, as was osmium, at the end. It took half an hour. Drawing, and we've created the documentation for future machines. But big global changes have taken place in Norris Nickel. Norris Nickel has changed much in their technology and forgot about me. On this day, I believe that a very progressive man has returned to this technology and we have established a memorandum of the world's first industrial plant for extraction and separation of platinum group metals, which in itself implies a new era of technology. Further, as I have said along with nanopowders, there is also the possibility of different coatings, which were previously inaccessible with existing technologies. Anatoly Fizenka very gloomily told me, Professor, you have with this invention grossly violated the second law of the KGB. I got the chills even though I understood that this was a joke. I said, and what is the second law of the KGB? He said, the second law of the KGB is, the more active the element, the less often it occurs in a free state. And then he said, we felt that in order to know all the features that you know, the vapor pressure, temperature, and so on, it would take a single institute 60 years of hard work. Where did you learn all this? I was bursting with pride and said, yes, with this invention, I have defined science for the next 20 years. Alexander Ivanovich Lebed, with his roaring voice, said, another person also said that and received as much. Here is the ore, which contains platinum group metals, and I let out my gas, which takes only... How this is done is not very easy to understand. Victor Petrick's results are such that people refuse to believe them, and then he shows samples of metals which are obtained from his metals. The experiment was very clean. The fact that it needs to be split now has been done specifically. I would have given you with pleasure the whole so that you would take it to Spain, but you will not be allowed to do so. Here is a metal deposited into its pieces. We'll give you a very small amount for analysis to ensure that we do not have to draw up special documents. This is in one place. Here, I will now show you. 
there should be here large pieces of metal. Here they are. That's it. Let's close it. Professor, analyze and let us know the results. You receive in your hands the result of very high technology. All your discoveries are invaluable to humanity and constitute a remarkable part of your scientific work which you are carrying out now. Twenty-four hours per day. When does he manage to do all of this? I use methods that are now used for a special kind of training that allows a person to be in a certain state. Forty minutes in this state equals almost four hours of natural sleep. This allows me, when there is a lot of high pressure and demand, to be able to sleep for only a few hours per night for many days in a row and still feel great. The studies of brain physiology and mythology are well known. The brain does not sleep. When our center is asleep, our silly body, although without the body, the brain would be even more foolish than its boss. It is very easy to implement any agreement with you. So, at your disposal is a gigantic computer with unbelievable opportunities. We must learn to use and cooperate with him. The most critical problem today is how to safely store hydrogen on board a vehicle. And on that subject, scientists are working night and day all over the world. This cylinder contains nanocarbon structures which are covered with palinodes by means of my gas phase technology. The Japanese know how to keep 1.8% of hydrogen. American scientists have created 2.8%. This here substance keeps 4.6% of hydrogen. Six is the amount required. I am close. We create pressure and the hydrogen completely passes through. How can there be such a molecule? Here is an atom and here also is an atom. If we draw a molecule of hydrogen and an atom here is not a little. And here the second atom and the molecule are here. I'm pouring two volumes of liquid hydrogen into one. We are happy to come to Russia since you have shown us the world's greatest scientific achievements. Thank you so much. <laughs> From precious metals, a direct way to precious stones. And again, Victor Petrik is not interested in the stones as a cash equivalent. He makes miniature sculptures of them. On the precious stones, work was not created because it was considered to be technically unfeasible before Victor Petrik. When I was a student at the Department of Psychology, very close, within 10 minutes from me, an outstanding sculptor, Yuri Kirillovich Rednik, lived and worked. He was a prominent sculptor miniaturist. In his life, his miniatures were exhibited for two years in the Tretikov Gallery. It seemed to me, I am a psychologist who can make such miniatures that convey the inner life of man. How did the sculptor know such intricacies as we know? No. He taught me and everyone laughed because my items were insignificant. Maybe this is the correct word. They are, you know, like a coin, as a miniature, flat, meaningless. He spoke mysterious things to me. When you see the back of his head in his work, and today I went beyond my teacher in his work. I had done the same thing in my work and the back of the head was visible and I did it in stone.
This technology is so complicated that it is very hard to describe, explain. But I have a little show. The first thing I do, I sculpt it in wax. This is one of the best works, this Patriarch Diodore. And then, this work is in stone. The method differs from the highest of his recent achievements in the field of processing solids, such as ultrasound and laser technology, which are not able to convey more accurately the details of the image. Lawler has been negotiating with Victor Petrick about the possibility of his works on precious stones in his exposition. Now, attention! Victor Petrick does not simply make portraits on gems, many of the stones he himself cultivates. Traditionally, rubies are grown in the non-container method, the Vernalea method. So here is this thing growing in the air. It doesn't come into contact with anything. This is the traditional Vernalea method ruby. There is only one type, a pencil, which incidentally bursts in half. There is always a crack. To grow a large ruby is the highest technological challenge. This one was cultivated in this machine. This mystery, which is carried out in the ground at the highest vacuum, in high temperatures, and a stone is cultivated. This little traditional boat is for the traditional Bagdasarov method. Here, priming powder of a real stone is put in. And then after it melts, and the corresponding decomposition of the stone crystallizes under the given structure to it. So, this ruby. Here reminds us completely of the body of a boat. It is grown in the molybdenum form, and yet it is an ideal structure, a perfectly clean stone. This is a remarkable achievement. The founder of crystallography in our country is the great expert Dr. Musatov. When I said that I have grown the stone in molybdenum boats, he said that I will come to you to work as a laboratory assistant. I will respect him forever, so I didn't take it to the laboratory assistant, but it underscores the difficulty of the task. Work has already been done from this ruby. When I solve an issue by technology, I have a feeling that I am swimming in a state of happiness. Literally bathing. This is the highest joy. The creative solution is the highest joy. It is beautiful. But in a few days, everything could be different. Because I return to Earth again. Because again, it is necessary to work. Viktor Petrik, scholar of the Russian Academy of Natural Sciences, scholar of the Peter Academy of Sciences and Arts, scholar of the Academy of Problems of Security and Defense, scholar of the International Academy of Science, Environment, Security, Human and Nature, scholar of the International Slavic Academy of Sciences and Arts, scholar of the Academy of Science and Technology, professor, doctor of physical and mathematical science, founder of four new discoveries. <laughs>